As is typical with Amazon, yesterday we had a new fall announcement for their Kindle lineup. And there's a few new things in the lineup and a few refreshes. So I just wanted to do a quick video for you guys and give you the kind of lowdown on what to expect from these devices. The first and biggest announcement by far is the new Kindle Colorsoft. And that is a new color device, as the name suggests, in their lineup of Kindles that is Kaleido 3 technology based. Now Kaleido 3, the basics are that it has a black and white layer and then a color RGB matrix above it. So you do get reduced contrast in general. I reviewed some of these devices, but Kaleido 3 is a technology that has been around for over a year and a half at this point. If you look here on the wiki, it was released in, I think it was like mid or late 2021. And that followed Kaleido Plus, the previous technology but it has increased pixel density and from my eyes on the devices i've seen it looks pretty good in my opinion it's the first color actual technology on these devices that looks good and kind of vibrant the ones before that like kaleido plus had a bit of muted colors and the ppi the pixels per inch was much lower but like you can see it has been around for a year and a half it is a seven inch device so this kind of competes with the Libra Color and the Pocketbook Era. One of the changes is that it does have wireless charging. So there's a dock here you can buy in a bundle that's about, what is that, 50, 60 bucks more for the actual dock, which gives you that kind of convenience. I wonder if this'll double as like a nightstand maybe? We'll see. <laughs> now, if you're asking why this took so long, Amazon kind of sticks to tried and true technologies, and this has clearly been successful in the market. This is a seven inch Kobo here, for example, and I have the seven inch Pocketbook Inkpad Color 3 as well. One thing you'll know is the contrast is not as good, so you will typically want to be using the front light on a Kaleido 3 device. And then next, uh, not a huge update, but more of a design change because Amazon had, I did a full review of this if you wanna check it out, but the Kindle Scribe, the previous version, they, they're calling this the new Kindle Scribe. It is new, but it is not that new. It is still the same technology inside. They've updated the stylus, so I think they only have the premium stylus now. The design is much more Remarkable-esque, which is funny now, because Remarkable has shifted away from this design in the Paper Pro here, but this design here, is very remarkable like the jade is kind of a cool color and then the tungsten looks exactly like a remarkable when i reviewed the kindle scribe one of the things i talked about was the lack of the ability to annotate on books directly you had to do like sticky notes on the side and that is something they're now calling active canvas which is is good to see and i think that should actually apply to the older kindle scribe as well no need to really upgrade here it's more if you're looking at getting a new device and this is 450, so it is significantly more expensive than the previous one, but this is the 64 gigabyte version that we're looking at here. And they're calling this the new Scribe. But another thing is the AI notebook tools. I just did a live stream yesterday of the Viewwood's AI paper, and that's something we're starting to see integrated more into these devices. So it'll be interesting to test how that works. And I think that will be pushed to the old Kindle as well, the Kindle Scribe, because it is all cloud-based on that service. The Kindle Paperwhite now moved from 6.8 to seven inches, and they claim it's their fastest Kindle ever, but they have uh, some, some interesting colors on the back plate, you can see. Raspberry, black, and jade. Not too much new about this, but um, should have really good battery life, and it is waterproof. And then finally, the new Amazon Kindle, the kind of cheapest version they make, is a six inch device, and this is really just for your basic kind of reading needs and it is a nice little portable design like this Kobo I have here. The interesting thing here is that Kindle is a like subset of e-readers, but I think a lot of people that have Kindles that have had libraries in Amazon, it's certainly understandable that you've maybe had that for decades. So you don't really know what else is out in the market. But if you're new to my channel, I've done a lot of reviews on these devices, primarily the note takers, but some of the readers, and I'll be doing some more of these. And I'll certainly be taking a look at some of these Kindles. The Colorsoft is very interesting and I wanna see the new Kindle Scribe software. But just FYI, there are other things on the market where you can use the Kindle app. The Kindle is just 
integrated into the Kindle ecosystem. So it is, it is just a little simpler, but some of these other devices provide some versatility that the Kindle might not offer as well. And yeah, if you wanna check out this Pocketbook Inkpad Color 3 that I've reviewed, you can check that out here. It is my favorite Kaleido 3 ink color reader that's 7.8 inches. And hopefully you found this useful and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.